bit about typical problems which can happen with the third chakra. So some people ask me, how do I know what the third chakra is like? Well, um, because it is in a way um, your, your fund, fundament, the basis which you can go down to but cannot go any further, there's actually a few ways to get to know it. Um, one thing is basically to get drunk or to get very stressed. So what happens if you get drunk is that your higher energy centers start shutting down. You stop being extremely spiritual, then you stop being rational, then you stop caring about yeah, what is proper, and ultimately you stop caring about what other people think or feel, and you just become ultimately honest. You say what is going on with you, what you want, what you're feeling. And this is really a liberated third chakra. The third chakra is our basic survival mechanism. And all other behaviors are built up from that. So once we are able to survive and to take care of ourselves, we feel secure. Then we can start opening our heart and caring about how other people feel. And based on that, we can form a little bit of a model of society, what is proper, what is moral, what is right, what is wrong. And based on these two things, we can create more complex behavior, more rational behavior. What will be the effects of my actions? What will be the result? How to improve my karma? How to improve my behavior? And ultimately, it becomes even spiritual that you start seeing your own life, uh, your own existence, your own actions as a tools for helping your spirit to develop itself, to change its karma. But also the reverse also happens. So if we get very active, very stressy lives, then we stop thinking about what our spirit needs, then it becomes completely rational. And it becomes like, okay, I need to plan my day in a very efficient way. And uh, if that doesn't work, then we become very mechanical. Then we just do what is expected of us and keep running like a little gerbil in a treadmill. And if that doesn't work, we often become very moody, very grumpy. And like how not think of what is expected anymore. But I'll just yeah get yeah rages urges uh, and become more primitive in my behavior and the ultimate level of primitiveness is if you go all the way down to the third chakra and then it becomes purely instinctual not even emotional anymore and this process happens of course when we drink alcohol when the higher energy centers shut down and the lower ones remains and this is a very good way to get to know somebody's third chakra just to get them a little bit drunk and this is also why many people enjoy uh, drinking a little because it liberates them from all these pressures all the complexities of the higher chakras the same happens also when a person gets very stressed um, when they go into a depression or a burnout or um, a bore out or something similar. Also the higher centers shut down because ultimately they find that they're unable to resolve the problem. And then you go back to a more primitive level. And uh, unfortunately, um, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, the heavier the energy the more difficult it is to ignore and the more um, power it has to shake the foundations of other people. So if on a spiritual level I have a disagreement with somebody, well, that's fine. You have your way of developing yourself, of developing your spirit, and I have mine. If you have more or less of an intellectual dispute, well, it already becomes a little bit more visceral but yeah it is still hypothetical um, ultimately it can become a cultural problem like what is right what is wrong and different cultural or even religious values can clash quite strongly 
then it can become emotional problem and then it can become really anger and hate and usually when it goes down all the way to the belly then it becomes a very physical thing so then we start hitting people locking people up uh, screaming at them um, so it is ultimately a devolvement of behavior rather than evolution of behavior um, but depending on the maturity of the uh, third chakra such uh, going down to the lower levels is more or less detrimental because every time that we have in a way a collapse that the third chakra is forced to incorporate all the needs and desires and complexities of these higher uh, chakras it builds itself up it forms more complex behavior to not just behave in an instinctual way but also to address all the other problems which can occur on all the higher levels which are ultimately yeah, shoved down into its throat to resolve so in one way we need these crises we need the drama we need the collapse of our lives to develop our third chakra of really creating a more solid foundation uh, for our personalities uh, on the other hand by doing this the third chakra tends to get quite warped so if you have a few crises in your life that is okay but if you have a lot of crises or very long lasting crises in your life then also the third chakra instead of yeah becoming growing or being added to by getting all the energies which would normally go into the higher chakras the third chakra gets very confused about its role instead of integrating all these responsibilities it becomes confused and blocked by all the uh, impossible demands and then the third chakra starts to stagnate so often you will find that some people have quite a sizable third chakra but almost no energy flow in them and this is a sign that often the person has a strong personality and has uh, in a way also collapsed a lot of their higher chakras into the third chakra but because they're unable to yeah resolve the inherent yeah dilemmas that they feel unable to let the energy flow unable to act and they become in a way paralyzed and once the third chakra becomes paralyzed it often manifests itself in the form of a depression Another thing which can happen is that a person learns that uh, by having a very powerful third chakra they can get into trouble. So the problem is that when we enlarge our third chakra we in a way take a leadership position but if somebody else already has or claims that leadership position it can turn into a conflict. Neither of you wants to follow the other and these conflicts can be, become very hateful, very destructive and ultimately a person can learn that it is better to back down in a way they want to show their energy but at the moment it starts to flow they in a way clamp down and block themselves because they don't want to cause a fight, they don't want to cause an argument, they don't want to get beaten up or something like that. So often the shape of uh, uh, such a chakra is that it opens quite widely and then in a way curves inward again so rather than just being open like a trumpet like this it starts this way and then seals off again or even seals in on itself again so then the person is blocking their own power their own energy this is a pattern you see a lot in people who've been victims of abuse uh, whether as a child or in a relationship and it can be physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse um, but ultimately the person gets a very negative relationship with their very own power and this leads to a dependency because the person's own power is blocked they have to rely on the other person's power on the other person's third chakra to carry them forward, to move them, to give them guidance and uh, then you get into a very much uh, 
dependency relationship or a codependency relationship because the other person is only able to rule or to lead or to have this ego boost because they're blocking the other person and especially men have this tendency um, to try to block the female uh, third chakra because they feel very easily overwhelmed or threatened by it. Um, one of the reasons for this is that because of the uh, power of the second chakra in women to make contact with the cosmos much more easily, they can have a lot more energy in their second chakras and also much more energy and power in their third chakras. And it is not a personal power, it is really the power of the universe, of Mother Nature working through them. So the female intuition, you could say, or the female instinct um, has a tremendous amount of power. And men don't like to follow women anymore because of a sh cultural shift. And as a result, they end up blocking the third chakras of women and sometimes even the second chakras of women because they feel overwhelmed by these energies. They cannot comprehend nor control. And then men are, in a way, imposing the same limitations they are experiencing on other people. And this is very much a problem in male leadership, that they tend to impose their own restrictions on other people as well. Which happens less in female leadership, but in female leadership there is a lot of uh, yeah, envy and long-term competition uh, between them. Because the feminine energy is more of a reactive energy and um, if there is not a certain power to react to then they cannot stabilize themselves and unless there is indeed a clear leadership or a clear ideal or a clear thing to follow then often these energies try to stabilize themselves by in a way conflicting with other energies in which is usually other women or seen as somehow being threatening or competition for existing in the same niche. So you will find quite often in female third chakras that there's a lot of damage inflicted by other women. Um, usually the damage is relatively superficial, but it does uh, impact quite strongly uh, from the chakra inward actually into the fire meridians. So, and it ultimately damages the person's self-confidence and confidence in other people. So this is how women in a way fight for dominance by uh, making the other person more uncertain. Uh, so it is not strange that women complain a lot about uh, yeah, feeling unsafe, feeling unsupported, uh, because they are in a way damaging their own ability to feel that way in each other. Um, it's a very unfortunate system, but it probably has some uh, had some value in the past when hum humanity was evolving. What you often find is that especially these damage from, in a way, competitors is usually on the sides of the chakra. So these sides can become very um, yeah, lacerated, so the energy doesn't flow out in one strong controlled stream, but it is in a way leaking out on to the left and to the right. So if it gets very foggy on the sides, that is usually that the person has a lot of yeah, traumas from conflicts with other people. And the more towards the base of the chakra, usually the earlier these conflicts are. So they're already having fights with their parents, with their teachers, then usually these already the base of the chakra is damaged. And if it's more later in life or more into the present, the damage tends to be more towards the mouth of the chakra, more in the front. One other thing is also very much the, uh, the balance again between the front and the rear. So the rear of the chakra is very much in how much the person's leadership or actions are supported. The front is how much they need to invest themselves to get anything done. And this is also how you can often distinguish uh, 
a real leader from a person who is just acting as a leader. A real leader will be open to be supported by his people or her people and will feel the support, will feel in a way the energy of the group which is carrying them forward and their power which they're manifesting as a leader is actually not only their personal power but it's very much the power of the group, of the collective which they're leading. And if you have a person who is in a leadership position, because this is their job description, but they're not really um, connected to the people they're leading or they're not a natural leader, then often the front of the chakra will be quite large because they need to impress their will upon others, but the rear of the chakra will be quite weak. And often these leaders have a much more of an aggressive leadership style because they don't feel the that they are being supported or being accepted by the group so they need to rule by being very adamant or by being very inflexible or even aggressive so if you're in a way looking for a person to hire for a leadership position always try to see if the back of the chakra is as well developed as the front of the chakra I hope this helps to uh, identify some of the more common problems with, uh, with the chakras. The, ultimately, the third chakra should be able to transform all the higher energies which come into it also in yellow light, into power. It does not always happen that way, especially with energies coming from the throat. They often can become a very big blockage in this chakra. So that's something to work on. Because the throat is basically about ideals, about a perfect self as defined by society. And when this framework does not fit who you really are, then there can result a lot of uncertainty, a lot of self-doubt, uh, feeling that you're not good enough, um, that you're stupid or something else. But ultimately, this is not true. It is just that the comparison of yourself with an ideal of self which is not yours actually which is just the ideal of other people creates a lot of problems and in the practical part we will have more of a look at how to fix all these issues in the chapter